Hi everyone, um, it is January 1st, 2017, 30 minutes past the, uh, past the new year, and, um, I wanted to upload a couple videos on my latest project. So, my project is called the, uh, Manual Hotkey. It's kind of like an auto hotkey, where you click a macro on your keyboard and automatically type stuff for you. <clears throat> I'm a little bit sick, so uh, excuse the, uh, coughing and dying. But um, basically what this project is, it's based around the ATmega 32U4 in a, a in a QFN44 pin package. So a quad flat pack no lead or quad flat no lead. <clears throat> and this is the board. So this is just a standard ATmega 32U4 with a couple of buttons, a couple buttons and uh, a couple of LEDs where the software or the internal RXTX for the USB lines are. So if you haven't played with this chip before, um, you can just look at the reference diagrams for any Arduino breakout board for it and uh, it'll just make sense. Uh, I played around with the USB, so this is the USB that's connected straight to the chip. And I have a full-size uh, USB male A cable <coughs> or connector, and that's just on the edge of the board and they have a micro USB so those both of those are connected in parallel to each other and they both go here with some shocky diodes going straight to the VCC line through a fuse and of course an inductor right here for the shielding of the USB port um, both of these shields are connected since they're going to be in parallel with each other <clears throat> just you know your simple your basic uh, uh, filtering for your voltage rails for the chip these should be as close as possible to where they are, and I have to kind of fuck with it a bit on the PCB, but it works. <clears throat> Here's a boost converter. Uh, ignore this transistor. This is a PNP transistor, but in real life it's actually um, a uh, dedicated switch mode chip for 5 volts. Uh, I bought this whole, well, this little chunk at, um, at a 99 cent store, and it's the kind where you put two AA batteries and it makes USB. Uh, obviously it was not very high current, it's just like maybe around 500 milliamps or less, and that's just enough to run the, the microcontroller plus a little bit of peripherals. <coughs> Here's a switch, and this just manages uh, things like the temperature sensor for the lithium ion battery controller, uh, a connection from the actual lithium polymer battery to the input of your boost converter, and a little switch or the first switch for the control of our um, power indicator LEDs. Um, right here we have the lithium ion charger, which is based around the TP4056. Uh, these three Shockey diodes, or at least just three diodes in general, are connected to each of the USB ports, um, V plus rails, so that I can charge independent of whichever um, USB port is active. Uh, you know, this is just using the standard. Uh, the standard uh, diagram for the TP4056. <clears throat> and I changed this resistor, so this resistor is not really a 122, it's actually supposed to be a 302, so a 3K resistor, but I accidentally changed it to a 303, um, as you'll see in some of the later videos. Um, and this actually, this is wrong, so red and blue are connected to these charger ports, and then green is the uh, one connected to the VCC rail, but this uh, this diagram that was included with Eagle CAD was uh, slightly wrong. Right here is our EEPROM memory, so this is external EEPROM separate from the internal EEPROM in the ATmega32U, and this is going to be used as like kind of like a black box. So like this will be used for any external storage that we want, um, just in case the uh, it's going to run on battery power. So you know we'll have somewhere to store our information. So this is 40. 4096 uh, address spaces with, um, I believe it's 8 bit. So 0 to 255, or maybe even more. I'll have to check. Okay, right here is our, our uh, real time clock. It's based on the DS3231. Um, I didn't break out any of the extra pins because I didn't need them. But it does have a square wave generator and stuff, but I just have all of the not connected lines and uh, there's no address lines on here. So yeah, all the not connected go straight to ground. I don't have a coin cell, but on the board I do include a, um, pads for a coin cell. But I actually connect VBAT straight to our um, our lithium battery through a jumper lead because I 
I didn't have the correct connector and I didn't want to bother you know getting the right one and it works fine because then it also tells us if the battery ever dies kind of like a black box like enable kind of thing and here's just some pull-up resistors for our, our I2C line <clears throat> these are just all of the outputs so we have our regular ICSP header we have our digital IO header our uh, serial UART for the RXTX1 port, so the UART1. So this is the separate UART from the uh, from the USB. Um, we have another uh, I squared C breakout for the onboard OLED display, and we have another one for just anything extra, as well as you know our five volt power supply. Um, also, all the ADC lines plus the analog reference line. So. A ref right here, going through our capacitor, of course. <clears throat> here we have our um, USB to UART. So this is connected to the uh, RXTX1 port, so the UART1. Uh, UART0 is the onboard USB of the AT Mega, and this is the, sec the separate UART. So if you were to go into your serial command thing in Arduino, normally you would do like serial.print. So to access this one, you would have to type uh, serial one dot print, and um, that's that's basically it. That's the whole circuit. So what does this thing do? It uh, it basically will simulate a keyboard, and it will probe its pins depending on how you set them in the uh, with the uh, onboard GUI using these buttons in the OLED display, and. Uh, It'll output that data to an Excel spreadsheet, and then you can like graph it and stuff. And it's actually cool because I used it recently. Um, yeah, let's move on to the board. How's the board? It is one and a half by four inches, so one and a half inches wide by four inches long, and it's got our headers and all that stuff. Um, this board layout could have been better, but uh, I optimized it for. Uh, and I'll say it could have been a lot smaller, uh, not too much smaller, like this could have been, the power section could have been compressed in a bit more, but I mean, it's as dense as I can get it for a first layout of the board. Um, obviously a lot of the power stuff, like the, some of the traces are just going off into like stupid places where, like I should have moved a couple things closer, but honestly like this is the layout that I thought would work the best and just looks the best and it was easier to assemble. Because um, I can assemble it in parts and test individual areas as I go instead of having to like do the entire board at the same time <clears throat> But yeah, uh, that's the board. Please excuse the mess It is a couple days after Christmas, and I've been really sick with the flu. I actually got the flu on Christmas Day Great present, right? Um, so this is I believe is my manual hotkey boards. They finally shipped from Osh Park uh, They've been sitting in the um, the shipping warehouse where I live, um, they've been sitting there because they arrived on the 24th and obviously since there's no mail on Sunday and Monday since it was Christmas, um, you know, no mail. Okay, uh, I finally got that freaking tripod on, so let's cut this thing open. Um, this is one of my three horror freight, um, knives. What is this? Jelly beans? I did not know they came with jelly beans. That's pretty cool. Um, and my three boards. Cool. Here they are. Oh my god, they're perfect. Yeah, no issues with that board whatsoever. Ooh, nice little solder mask, MHK right there, version 0. Let me turn on my uh, my ghetto ring light that I made for my phone. My phone has is charging right now and the memory is full. Um, so I'm actually just going to stick this right here and that should give us some good things right there. Um... Yeah, so right here we have battery programming UART, which is right here where the 5050 um, LEDs are. My big uh, chip right there. Hopefully that's 
the right pin pitch, I believe it is. Uh, where I'm going to have my socketed chip, the one really through hole component other than all the headers. Ah, this looks really freaking good. Um, that'll do. My one board. I could, I do have enough parts to make a second board. <clears throat> Except I don't have an extra OLED display, so I'll have to buy another one if I wanted to. But here it is. So... It's got the USB port for plugging it in, it's got a micro B, or a micro whatever connector that is, micro USB here. This one is connected in parallel with this port, in case I don't want to plug it straight into the computer. This one is for the CP21... 21 something... 2102? Two, two yeah. Um, USB to serial UART, and... All of the pins for that are broken up right here. So it's 5 volts, ground, TX, and RX. Um, I am having a problem with this chip right now, so maybe this needs to be resoldered. I did solder all of this by hand, you know, hot air, some solder paste, and just some good old fashioned hand soldering. Um, I did not have the battery holder for this, for the RTC. So I just got a wire from the positive connection brought it all the way to my rechargeable battery right here which is uh... which is fine because um, it'll run from 2.2 volts up to 5.5 for the battery so that's good and every time i plug it in it is charging so that turns out to not be bad uh... surprisingly this was the easiest chip to solder the uh, AT Mega 32U4 uh, i am using different buttons because those were just the buttons that i had uh, using a 128 by 32 I need to clean up some of that flux because I have had to reflow that chip because there was some shit still underneath it and it kept seeping out so I just reflowed it once last time and uh, it stopped happening um, I have external EEPROM and I'm just using that as like disk space so I actually have like a couple of these chips and I can just pop them in and out um, using some 5050 RGB LEDs and those just show all the status stuff for like the uh, the USB RXTX, the internal USB as well as the external UART so this is a serial port 1, this is serial port 0 and this is for the battery indicators so there's a lithium polymer battery on here and I have changed the programming resistor right here if I can zoom in and it will focus you fuck there we go is a 30 does that say 309? it's not supposed to be 309, that's supposed to be 303 30, yeah 303 there we go 303 resistor so that's a 3k resistor and then that brings it so that this charging current is uh, 400 milliamps for this 400 milliamp battery. Well, it's not 400 milliamps, it's less. Um, the chip looks like it's exploded. Don't worry, it's not. It's because I had, this was, I, I lost the chip that I was supposed to put on here. And the only chip I had left was um, the one on my demo board, which I had a heat sink hot, or not hot glued, but super glued onto it. That's why it looks like shit. And I know this is bad, I'm using tantalum capacitors, 10 microfarad tantalum capacitors. I know it's bad, but I mean, this is not going to get hot, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, here's my boost converter, um, and these switches. So, uh, this green switch, the or this green switch, switch number 3 turns on the power status indicators. Switch 2 turns on the battery, so it connects the battery to the boost converter and it turns on the whole thing. And switch 1 is for the temperature sensor of this thing. Since this battery does not have a built-in temperature sensor, it just shunts it to ground. Um, so that it actually allows for charging. So I can run it like this. So this is not plugged into the computer. Uh, I'm not done working on the firmware, but uh, it is kind of working. So right now it's saying it's 8.07, and it is 8.07. Uh, so yeah. And it's the um, first. That's wrong. Okay. I didn't change that. I need to adjust it. 
But yeah, it's uh, currently December 30th, not January 30th, 2016. Uh, so let's press any key. Uh, we can go to data acquisition, so we press the top key. And then we can either do a start, and then this middle button goes back, but you can't press it while it's running, so you have to press stop first, and then you can go back. You can go to the settings menu, and you can set your pin modes, so you can say what pins do what. See, so like, I can say go in here, and then it says A0, so ADC0 is doing nothing right now, but I'm not going to change those. This part of the code isn't quite finished. It might not even go back. Yeah, see, it's, oh, okay, it went back. <laughs> But yeah, you can go into the trigger types. There's nothing in here, so if I go in here, it's it's screwed. Like, yeah, okay, so it still works. So right now in these two lines of codes, this array right here, the pin array, um, is the actual names of the pins that are available. And then the mode array is for what those pins actually do. So zero means none, one means ADC. So right now I hard-coded it to ADC because my um, my pin mode setting um, that's built into here isn't finished yet. It's not working yet. So I hard-coded it. Um, and then the trigger type, true means um, that it uses delay as my trigger type, so I can set it to go like once every however many milliseconds that I set. So my trigger delay currently by default is one second, so 1,000 milliseconds. Um, and then I'm just going to upload this. A while ago I had it with the um, trigger type as false, which does a one minute increment, so it it checks the RTC until one minute has passed, and then it, it dumps whatever information, so it's going to be dumping that. But right now, since I have the trigger type as true, it'll be doing once every one second, and then I have an Excel spreadsheet right here that will uh, show you the outputs of the ADCs. So I'm going to upload this code, you can watch it flash over, so right now it's compiling in the Arduino software and hopefully we'll find the port okay cool date's still wrong so I need to adjust that but um okay so I'm in the first cell and then I'm gonna go press any key I'm going to go into data acquisition I'm going to hit start, and it should be doing it once every second. So I'm going to actually touch the ADC pins, and maybe we might get a change on the outputs. So you can see it kind of changing. And there we go. Now I'm going to press stop, and it stopped. So what printed out here is our count. So we know it's one second increments. Uh, one second delays, so we can just use this A column as our time, and then B through G will be used as our actual data. So if we, like, the reason, this is kind of like the whole reason I made this is that you can graph data over time without you having to probe it with a multimeter every freaking time. And then obviously we can get, like, really high accuracy stuff. So we can just do, select all of that stuff, insert a chart, I'm not left-handed, and let's get an XY scatter with that and smooth just because smooth looks nice and that is our data graphed see we had we had approximately 19 samples because we started at zero that's why it's an 18 over here so we had our it goes up to 20 and then um, the way that this is so you obviously if you know how to read a chart so this pin is actually closest to the ground pin the ground reference pin that I have on the actual header itself and this is closer to the digital pins that's why it's actually higher in voltage so if I actually had all of these on a drop down resistor or pull down resistor these would all be at zero so they were all pretty flat and pretty linear kind of like oh at least they were keeping their area and then when I started touching the pins they started fluctuating down I started trying to short the, uh, the ADCs to ground, and that's why it went. It dipped down, and then as the capacitance in my body built back up, it went back, and I, you know, obviously I turned it off. So yeah, this whole thing works, and it works pretty freaking well. Um, 
hopefully once I finish the firmware, it will be awesome. And I will give you guys the board files and uh, the code, maybe, so that I can get a little bit of help making this thing awesome.